Dude, it's okay. My on my desert sled on this side, like the the rear brake was leaking from a trail ride that I did. So rear brake fluid got all over the exhaust, and it's all bent up over here. And I've got like rubber burnt onto it as well. It's all you'll see if you ever see that bike in person. You'll see it's just a beat up piece of crap, and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my sports are. <laughs> That's how I described it. It's a beat up piece of crap, but it's awesome. Let's do it, man. All right. You want to do an intro or something, or that, that is our intro. You know, <laughs> you know, you don't do it like me, huh? I always go like, no, oh, "What's dude. going on, everybody?" Yeah. You know, maybe you don't that's do that. the, maybe that's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is about as fast as we're allowed to go up Mount Lemon, so it's about 14 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, dude, this is a lot of nice stuff up here. I, I absolutely love you. you rode up here uh, yesterday. And I did, yeah, yeah. It's it's gorgeous. It's so dude, the cool. The views, the views are so awesome. Maybe it's the Sky Island Scenic Byway. It's it's yeah. It's pretty I think cool. I, st I think I stopped at nearly like every little vista and, and little drop off point that I could look at because it's just so pretty. Yeah, there's a U of A. They have like this mobile app where there's a sign back there that says start the app now. And if you do the speed limit. It's like, look out your left. You will see the saguaros. These are oh, natural. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And it, and you'll see at the end where it says, you can go ahead and turn it off. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's it's really neat. I mean, it's, it's something you might want to do one day if you're by yourself and whatnot. And yeah. It's a one lot thing of fun. I, one thing I really liked about this, this ride is it starts off, you know, deserts, cactus, rocky, and then, uh, you know, you end up in like forest and ice and mountains. Like, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, there's actually bears in up here. Yeah, I saw the sign. I was like, oh, cool. Let's see if we can see one. <laughs> I've actually had a deer, uh, once we get past Windy Point where all the Ponderosa Pines are, I actually had a deer in the middle of the road while I was riding, and I was like, ah. Oh. And it just, it took off, but it's like, wow, that's, it's a reality that there's, there's animals out here. Yeah. But yeah, this is an easy road, man. So if like anybody uh, that's watching this or listening to this is, is uh, wanting to come to Tucson, Take your bike up here. It's going to get colder up at the top, about 30 degrees colder than, than Tucson, but it's an easy ride, easy ride. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier where it's just, um, you know, it's not, a, it's not a challenging road. There's no tricky corners or decreasing radiuses, and the road surface is really great. This is just, like, such a nice road to take. Literally any motorcycle could do this and just have a great time. Yeah, easily. Oh, look, there's still snow on, on that mountain way over there. Yeah. But... No, dude, there's, like, there's a bunch of trailheads. That's what you see a lot of these cars are here for. So that's yeah. only one thing you got to watch out for is like a car coming out. Oh, there's the van that I want. That is a nice van. That's a big one, too. Dude, yeah, the... Was that a Mercedes Sprinter? That's the one you yep. want? Yeah. That's a nice one. Because they have like four-wheel drive. And... What do those run? Like 60, 70 Gs or something? <laughs> like how much How much are they? <laughs> like the base is like 44. <laughs> oh, okay. God damn. Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my beater truck in a couple weeks and call it good. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do. Just get a get a truck. But Dan, I got I hate to break it to you, but we are speeding right now. We're going 42 miles oh, per hour. Shit. So we got we gotta we gotta tone it back, man. Tone I it got back. so excited. Safety first, dude. That's true. Safety first. Thank you so much for being the safety <laughs> officer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, guys? You hear that? Yeah, he was the safety one on this. Yeah. I'm having, I mean, I don't get out a lot, <laughs> so when I'm, on the, when I'm on the bike, it's like I, I have fun. Plus, you have the, the, the beauty of editing, so, but I, I typically don't speed, guys. I don't speed. <laughs> yeah. I'll do five over, if that. Well, the one I, thing that did almost happen to you earlier that I have to lampoon you about a little bit is we were at a stoplight, and my camera wasn't rolling, unfortunately, <laughs> but you damn near put your foot into this big-ass pothole and dropped your bike, which would have been <laughs> hilarious. Oh, my gosh. And then I also freaking, yeah, I, I pushed the, I tried to pull a door on the way out of a, a culinary <laughs> dropout. Like, that to me, like, it might not bother you or anybody else, but it's like, as a firefighter, I should know exterior doors open outward. Yeah. And so... I, I felt like an idiot, but yeah, that. But that goes to man, show that it can happen to anyone, you know. It can. Yeah. You know, that's why I we. Mean, that's why you talk about the safety stuff. That's why we mentioned like those tips, because it's like, dude, it can really happen to literally anyone. Oh, that guy's going over. The oh, speed look limit. at that guy. He's not, he's going over the speed limit. <laughs> Do you think anyone's gotten pulled over on a bicycle here? Is that possible? Dude, I, I would assume so because you are speeding, right? Like you are in a vehicle and you're speeding. Yeah, we have to share the road with them. So yeah. So you should have to but they don't get pulled. Imagine a cop's like, pull over! And then they don't, and they pit maneuver the bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take him out! Get him, guys! Wow, uh, look at that canyon over there. That is gorgeous. Dude, that, 
there's there's a trail in there that you could take your your Ducati Scrambler. Oh man, uh, on that. I, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Like I would I would love to come back here with the sled and just goof around on these dirt roads. They look so fun. Dude, yeah, you would have a lot of fun. I I attempted Reddington Pass, which is over there on the Sports Surf, a while back, and crashed the drone. But <laughs> <laughs> it was a miserable three-inch clearance. But, you, but you're on the here. Sports you made Surf, it out alive, man. You made it I'm, out. I'm still here. I'm still here. And I got a new drone now, thanks to my buddy. But dude, that, you would have a lot of fun. A, a car could do most of it, so a scrambler yeah. or even this bike could easily do that. Then. Yeah, and that's the kind of trails that you want to do on those bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah between, they, between you and me, man, yeah, I was I was going way faster yesterday. <laughs> well, be, this is a very and nice the, pleasure cruise. The, the, between you and me and the three cameras we got running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of people do go fast. We did see, like, a, a, I guess a sport bike guy come up to the mountain area, but you'll see a lot of people choose to go down this mountain super fast, and around these blind turns is right when I was... Uh, taking my wife up here, I was like, you just got to be careful. You know, around these blind turns, uh, there could be a car going around it. And, Absolutely. And missing. There could so. be someone just cooking that yellow line a little bit. Because, like, I saw I saw a couple cars yesterday where they're like, I think they're just, you know, either texting or they're just inattentive. And they just get that one wheel over the line. You're like, bro, like, get back, like, in the lane, you know? Yeah. And I'm trying to give you a good line if, and, and keep it separated and staying more in, like, a lane position one and a half for yeah. you. Yeah. But I mean, like, whenever I'm up in the mountains and if I ever do a group ride up here, I'm just like, guys, just spread out. Just spread out. Yep. And that's No need the, to ride close. No need to be right behind each other. Just keep it staggered. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the cool things about, like, these new Bluetooth systems. I mean, they got that mesh technology so I can connect to the person in front of me. They're connected to the person in front of them, but I can still hear all three. Or, you yep. know what I mean? Yeah, so we're, that's, on our, we're on our car doors right now. Shout out to Cardo. Hell yeah. I got the slim, though. You got the... Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got the big, bad tech talk. Yeah. The, the, they're both really good. They're like the same thing, just one's like the battery's here instead of integrated with it. That's yeah, I it. would yeah. I would love to use the Slim, but it apparently doesn't work with this model helmet that I have, so that's the thing. Yeah, dude, I love your helmet. We have like like the same type of helmet, but different We, we look the same right now in general. <laughs> <laughs> we look like twins. <laughs> so the secret is that we haven't shown our face yet. I'm actually in the back. Yeah, yeah, no one, <laughs> no one knows who's riding what, yeah. <laughs> He's been riding my FTR this whole time. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot. It's going to start getting colder, if you notice. Yep. <laughs> I also, noticed that when I came up yesterday. I was like, woof, it's getting chilly up here. You also notice that all the saguaros and all the cacti are gone. Yep. They can't survive yeah. in this climate. So now we're, uh, like, in a mid to high desert, so you're going to see, like, the little itty-bitty baby ones and then the, yeah. the acatillos. But it's going to turn from shrubbery, like, very sparse shrubbery, to, like, a lot of shrubbery. And then it's going to go into, like... Uh, trees like small trees and the ponderosa pines big pines cabins yeah. up north dude it's it's beautiful it's like all of arizona in one like 45 minute ride yeah absolutely because one thing that i noticed about arizona i actually came through here in 2017 i was doing a big road trip and i stopped by i think it was flagstaff and flagstaff i'm sure as you know is like super high elevation like really kind of densely forested area and i was like yeah. what the hell this is arizona like it doesn't I, you would never think it but um yeah, like this ride, like you said, it just seems like all the ecosystem just put into one good road. Yeah, it, it, and then you also get like all the ecosystem animals. So like I talked about the bears and the and the deer. Yeah. You have, you have like coyotes like a little bit lower than this, and you got yeah, you know, they just go all over the place. It's it's a lot of fun to to be able to like go, go hiking and see all that stuff. We got bicyclists. All right, man. Good for you. See, that's another thing you gotta watch out here. Uh, the bicycle. You ever uh, you ever been mountain biking? Not like trail mountain biking. Like dude, basically, it is, it is so intense. Um, dude, I want to. I really do. I've done it once, and I ate so much shit when I did it. <laughs> like just <laughs> constantly falling, constantly eating dirt. Like oh my god, it was like it was once was enough. I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> it sucks. Are you trying to tell me like not to do it, or you want me I'm to experience kinda, it? I'm kind of. I want you. Well, I want you to experience it, but it it does just suck, honestly. Like, <laughs> you have to experience you, you it You approach once. it because you're like, oh yeah, I know how to ride motorcycles. Like it's completely different. Everything about it's different. Nothing translates. It's yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I definitely want to, especially out here in Tucson with all the trails like we were talking about with the, the, the Scrambler Desert Sled. If he had yeah. it, we, we'd be doing some badass trails out here. And, yeah, man, I'd and love to do that. Was there, like, any, like, uh, dual sports or anything on uh, Twisted Road or anything? Or, or was that, like, 
like the uh, bike that you got you chose that specifically for this well i chose this one because th this is obviously the first one that came around and i've really wanted to try out this mt10 for a while um because i love the cross plane and I'm, I'm kind of a yamaha fanboy so i was like yeah let's try out the mt10 but uh yeah if i rented like a like a wr250 or a drz 400 definitely would have some fun but the problem is as well um you know i would hate to take someone's bike on the trail because uh, it's a lot more likely that you're going to drop it and a lot more likely oh, yeah. that you're going to have an issue so I, i'd prefer to bring my own sled or even even get another bike and bring it out here and have some fun you passed you passed the arizona endorsement test on an mt10 <laughs> so <laughs> so it's 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 nimble enough and yeah it, that means a beginner could we talk <laughs> a beginner should get that bike and take it to the take it to the dmv yeah, and do look, it. it's really beginner appropriate see <laughs> Dude, it, that was a lot of fun. I Obviously, we're, we're talking about something that's not on video right now, but I had a lot of fun doing that little endorsement thing with you. Um, yeah, you lead now, dude. You lead. I want to look at you. All right. Yeah, I guess, guess get a different camera angle, right? I got I got I to gotta prevent myself from speeding because it's just so easy on this MT-10, man. Well, if you start to see me getting smaller and smaller in your mirrors, then, yeah. then that means you're going really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good here, though. We're good, good speed. Yeah, I know we're gonna pace. We're good pace here. Yeah. At any point, if you get like super cold, man, I brought an extra like thermal. Uh, oh well, uh, thank shirt. you, man. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm wearing I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt under this. I'm I'm pretty okay right now. It's usually my hands that go first because these are summer gloves. So. Yeah. I brought I brought winter gloves too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I I come prepared because you you, you just definitely don't want to like ride all the way to this or come all the way to this and be like, man, I can't make it up safely yeah. because if your hands go numb, shit. I mean. You, you are your reaction that's, time goes down so much that's your primary control too you know you definitely don't want your hands going numb yep yeah and, and if you're like back tenses up because you're starting to cramp i mean yep. imagine trying to turn your head with your back cramped up or body exactly. positioning so it's something you got to really watch out for it is funny though speaking of body positioning i wanted to get your take on this um i've kind of come to the realization and kind of like as i do this more and more uh like body positioning is really like important i think and i'm sure you'll agree with that but yeah, at the same yeah. time for these kinds of speeds and like we're doing the speed limit i don't feel the need at all to like you know get over like yeah. this and get all up in it like you can you can ride completely upright in a perfectly safe manner and carry perfectly fine pace what do you think there there's something to be said about riding upright and like sitting with the bike in line and making that turn because i feel like you have the best uh visibility and control in terms of like knowing where you are oriented with the bike yeah um, and so that plays a lot with beginners and stuff but if it's something that you practice a lot and you're doing that body positioning there is some safety uh benefits to that you know you keep your bike more upright so your suspension is more upright more you know, your tires are are doing a better job even though motorcycle tires are rounded for a reason yeah um, but yeah there's definitely pros and cons to each one but at this speed you're absolutely right dude you don't there's have no to. need at all yeah there, there really isn't and I'm glad that there's cars in our way so that we have to go to the speed limit. That's why. <laughs> this is actually like my favorite turn just because like you could see the whole turn. So yeah. if you wanted to go stupid, you could. Yep. Um, but it's also very unsafe and I do not recommend that as Dan and the fireman. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do, you'll do it off camera. Don't worry, we'll edit it out. <laughs> but man, this is a, this is a lot of fun with the, the mountain. Um, it, you said that, like Texas was like super hilly. Like, yeah, yeah, so where I where I live in Texas in Austin, it is really hilly, um, but we don't have anywhere near the size of mountain and kind of you know like scale. I mean, this is well, you don't have anything like this in Texas unless you go out to like Big Bend, which is so far west it's not even really Texas in my opinion. Like it's so far out there, it's an yeah. eight hour drive from where I live oh, in Austin, yeah. so it's yeah. it's not really relevant. But yeah, no, in Austin we have like really nice kind of rolling green hills and pretty hilly stuff. But honestly, like they're not. I would say like they're probably about as big as like you see like this little mount here yeah that's probably about as big as the whole hill <laughs> <laughs> so it's not it's not that big but the thing is like the whole city is like you know hilly like that so you get a lot of fun twisty roads and it is really pretty but this is like a whole the whole different thing yeah like we don't have oh, anything yeah. like this like carved into huge rock faces like this is oh, beautiful yeah. yeah this is this is like one of those gems of, of tucson yeah yeah, it works out really well. There's you went through Gates Pass, and that was like a nice little drop off. And did you get any footage of that? By the way, did I do what? Like, did you get any footage of like the uh, Gates Pass and all that? I did. Or, yeah, yeah. I, I think oh, I'm okay. including it in the MT10 vlog that I'm gonna put out in my little review of this bike. Awesome. Yeah, that's a fun little drop off and like a nice hill. You get a good view, and it's there's really just like a lot of 
lot of those little things around here in Tucson. Um, it, it, I'm just, I'm pretty lucky when it comes to that because it's nice out. You know, you, it, even if it's hot, you can come up here and it's 30 degrees colder. So yeah. it's like perfect weather. Camping is beautiful. We we did a camp out in April of last year for uh, the crew, uh, my crew, and we had like, you know, 20 people show up. We camped out. Um, it's just it's just a nice place to go, nice place yeah. to be. Yeah, you notice that like the ground looks a little like soaked up with water or something. It's like a rain. Yeah, yeah. I'm keeping an eye on it. Also keeping an eye on see if we're seeing any ice or anything like that. Yeah, I did see, see that, that yesterday. You are the safety officer, man. Look at that. You're all. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm a changed man. I'm trying to tell you guys, like, I'm not. <laughs> it's exactly that's the kind of thing you look for. You know, you got. Yeah. You know, why is the road like a different color in certain areas? It's like, yeah. oh well. Typically, it's water or maybe ice. You yep. know, it's just that's the type of stuff you gotta look for. But that's the thing. Like, I think I think you've mentioned this in videos where it's like, even though I'm definitely noticing it's probably wet, but that doesn't mean that I have to do anything that different. I just have to keep an eye on the road and keep it upright and just keep riding pretty normally and just yeah. be mindful of it. You know, you don't have yeah. to radically change your behavior just because you see a slight deviation in the road. Yeah, and it, it all it is is it's a traction loss type factor thing so what do you do with any type of traction loss which is gravel concrete slick metal yeah snow, you, you just ice. you just add more gas and you you stop the suspense <laughs> no no <laughs> <laughs> you, you slam the front brake and then yeah. just always hold the clutch in just <laughs> keep hold yeah just slam the front brake just <laughs> until it stops that's it exactly no there's dude there's snow in the little ravine down there yeah yeah so it's, it's cold it, it's keeping it's keeping the temperature yeah, I might have to take you up on that heated uh, those or those winter gloves you brought. If the hands are the same size, well, I got tiny hands, <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully they fit you. Yeah, hopefully we'll they see. fit you. Yeah, we could we could pop that out at Windy Point about the halfway point. But yeah, look at all the trees, dude. It just like yeah, it com trees. completely changes. Yeah, it starts like to turn almost alpine, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful up here. There's a lot of camp spots. Yeah, I, I, I truly enjoy it. Really enjoy it. I'm glad you're down here so we could actually ride together and do it yeah man this is great but yeah this is kind of what i was saying where it's like you know here in tucson it seems like this is the road and you go on this road and that's kind of it whereas like in austin we have like lots of different little roads that you can kind of go and have fun on it's all kind of twisty and hilly you know yeah but you got like like a bunch of tracks though you got like yeah tech dude texas is like if you want to like get involved in motorsports i think there's no better place uh other than maybe spain in the world to do it than texas because we have where i live Within like three hours of where I live in Austin, there's probably like five or six different tracks you could go to that are all like really good facilities. Circuit of the Americas is in Austin. Eagles Canyon Raceway is like that brand new track that I have a membership at. Um, it's, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I wonder if there's like just so many of them because there's <laughs> there's no mountains around. That's like honestly, that's probably it, right? Where yeah, it's like, they're... there's just not that many twisty roads. And so people have to get their fix somehow and they go take it to the track, which I think is phenomenal. Like that's where you should be doing that. Yeah, that, that's that's the safest way to do it. I mean, I, I wish, I mean, there's sometimes I would kind of wish Mount Lemmon was a little bit more restrictive and yeah. maybe more cops because we briefly talked about it, but like people come down this mountain, they go up this mountain super fast. There's like one cop that's patrolling, which yeah. is, I, I don't, we, we're around this spot right here. If you check a different video, that's where I got pulled over, but um, they, they get their fix here and there's no, uh, like regulation when it comes to like you know on a track you got to wear full gear you got to do this you got to do that the track is you know hopefully kept up and there's ems on standby possibly oh yeah there's like yeah like nice. almost almost always there's ems and ambulance on standby but honestly my biggest thing is uh there's no runoff here you know like if you've if you've been this corner look where you're gonna hit oh yeah yeah, yeah you're gonna yeah, hit exactly. a straight up wall like all the tracks have like nice clear runoffs and if you go if you cut it wide or you make a mistake you're just gonna fly off and you know it's gonna be pretty much fine uh yeah that's why like i can't fathom trying to really push a motorcycle in a situation like this like there's nowhere to go you know yeah it's yeah, so you... dangerous you don't it's not the, the sliding that that typically kills somebody it's the impact it's, it's, man it's the impact yeah yeah which is something sudden, you talk a lot about right i've seen in your videos about that like you know what kind of impact the traumatic impact that people have oh, in these yeah. crashes and stuff and it, that's going to make it way worse you know if you hit a stationary object versus a moving object depending on where you're going you know yeah it's that sudden deceleration that kills people and it's just uh people think that hey i got a helmet on it's gonna protect me it's like what about your spine your femurs yeah. And, and all that stuff. Your femur is the the, the, lar the strongest and largest bone, basically, long bone in your body, and it has a huge blood supply. So if you crack that or, or snap that, it, that means a lot of impact. You're bleeding out. 
and your femoral artery is right next to it, so hopefully you don't sever that. And you can easily do that by just, you know, crashing or angular incident into this brick or the, the rock wall. You could and... do that by getting your foot caught in a pothole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, hope, I'm hoping my ankle snaps first. <laughs> How did Dan die? Well, he just fuck got caught in a pothole. <laughs> How fucking terrible would that be? I let him bleed out to death. It was like, you learn your lesson, Dan. <laughs> You're like, oh, later. <laughs> I got the footage for the, the endorsement thing. I'm done. <laughs> no, I'd rush you to the hospital, bro. Don't worry. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, but no, talking about all this impact and stuff makes me really yeah, not want to push this bike at all out here now. I really don't yeah. want to speed at all. Yeah, dude, it's it's it will really get you when it comes to the crash and your gear is not going to save you honestly no, at, at, no. at high speeds and your gear might not save you at these speeds it's just it, yeah. ho hoping that it will and that's the thing you get a, a, a concussion just sitting on your bike and like at the stoplight like if i was doing it i put my foot in that pothole or i did put it in there but if i fell over and, and my ankle is fine but i hit my head i mean now i gotta check my helmet you know the inside make sure the foam isn't break or broken and then I could, if I have a concussion, that's a traumatic brain injury. That, yeah. that, that's, it's a mild traumatic brain injury, and that causes a lot of problems. I mean, you look at football players with CTE, and that, that totally changes how people interact with other people, their moods, their behaviors. Their yeah, everything. I actually, uh, the very first wreck I got into on a motorcycle was the one where I cut a corner wide, and then I went between this boulder and this fence, and I, I smacked my head pretty hard. Um, yeah. And I went to the hospital after I did that, and you know I was like, you know, literally looping every five seconds, like really yeah. standard like concussion type of stuff. I just yeah. like I couldn't remember anything. Everything was really fuzzy. Um, thankfully, I feel like you know nowadays it's fine. Um, but yeah, I had a really nasty slap on the head with that one. Yeah, I mean I don't want to speak for my friend, but he was he was involved in a, a left turn vehicle collision intersection, the typical thing. And same thing, man. It's that's that's a common sign of a traumatic brain injury is that uh, the repeating of of the situation like every five minutes every 10 yeah. minutes every 15 minutes and then hopefully 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 it goes from like you know every couple seconds to every minute to every five minutes to 10 minutes to every hour then never again but that's the type of stuff i look for when i would see like a car accident or anybody in some type of uh, uh physical incident and man it, it's it's tough it, it's tough to see and i couldn't imagine how it is to feel but it, you just feel really fuzzy and confused. I remember I felt fuzzy for a good like two weeks and then I yeah. kind of started getting back into the regular swing of things, but it was pretty scary, yeah. Yeah, the brain is not something you want to mess around with. And, no, and no, not at all. I'm, I'm the, so uh, The strange thing is on the big wreck that I have that everyone knows about the one where I, I hit the Porsche, um, I actually, uh, I didn't hit my head that hard. I remember the whole thing. Like I didn't have any weird looping concussion problems, uh, which is kind of miraculous, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 really good. Um, wow, look at that view, man. Oh, dude, on the way down, it is right after Windy Point is my favorite spot. We'll stop after Windy Point because everybody stops here. And yeah. I just prefer, unless do you have to go to the bathroom or anything like that? No, I'm okay. What about okay. you? Uh, no, I'm good. There's a bathroom. That's the only reason why I asked. But there's like a, a Vista Point right after this. That that's where I stop every yeah. time. And it's just like so beautiful. But uh, dude, is it I, coming I, up or where, where is that one? Yeah. It's right after this. It will, oh, okay. we'll, you'll you'll definitely see it. I'll tell you before we head out. Um, oh, there's another van that I want, the uh, Ford Transit. But With I want that tall setup, huh? Oh hell yeah, dude. Yep, get that hell height. Yeah. But yeah, dude, I couldn't imagine that <clears throat> that crash and 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 the after the ride podcast thing. Like I wanted to like just talk to people, but then I also thought of an idea of like after the crash and then getting people like on there and talking about you know the the mental aspect afterwards because i, I know a bunch of people that after they get in, only there's snow on the side um after they get into crash it's like i've never get on a bike you know the ptsd of it the anxiety disorder and all that so yeah the vista point's like right here on the right the geology vista point okay cool. um and i wanted to talk about the the mental aspect the physical aspect so any long lasting injuries so physically yeah right here and then uh Talk about the financial. I mean, that's a huge thing, you know, crashing a bike and, and like having to deal with that, like the loss of work. That's like the biggest thing is loss of work. That for, for a lot of people, that's a, that's a big, big thing. Yeah, if your job doesn't have short-term disability or even long-term disability, you're going to be in a tough spot when it comes to debt. Yeah. I think the only issue you'd run into doing oh, yeah. that why with people. Not, why am I not parking next to you? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you don't want to be near me, man. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> but yeah, God, the, we, we really do look like twins right now, bro. Like, look at us. 
Hell yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I wanted to like talk to some people because I mean, I do those after action reviews and, and it's like yeah. a lot of them are crashing and I'm like, well, what happened afterwards? Because that's only part of it. Well, I was going to say a big thing about it too is, you know, you get people on there talking about it. Maybe, you know, like you said, they have PTSD. They don't want to relive that incident um, Yeah, because it, it is tough for a lot of people. Yeah, that, that that's kind of why that, that kind of died down. But I, 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 I remember talking to like somebody personally uh, not my buddy Matt, but uh, someone personally. They just got in a crash, and yeah. and uh, same thing, the fuzziness and everything. And then uh, this was well after it, but he's like scared to like get back on the bike. Yeah, and it's like that was his life. And then uh, we were drinking a little bit, and he just started opening it up. And I'm like, fuck, dude, it's it it, it really messes with people. So yeah. Um, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't push that. I think, uh, <laughs> I think I have something broken in my brain cause I never was afraid to jump back on a bike. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally physically couldn't after my wreck. Like my, my nerve damage was so bad. My hand sat like this for a good year until they oh, finally yeah, got you... it to recover. Yeah. It didn't, it couldn't move. Um, but I was like pretty much like three months after like ready to go. I was like wanting to jump back on. I just, I don't know. That's one thing that like, I, I feel like no one's going to make it to the end of this video, but if they do like just my little piece about this, like. I have such a passion for motorcycling, like nothing's ever gonna stop me. Like I just absolutely love it so much, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Who you know? knows? Maybe maybe something down the line, like kids or, or something like no, that. I'm gonna put them on the bike too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, little, I, I've honestly, I've, I've broken up with like short-term girlfriends because they were like, "Oh, I don't want you riding." I was like, "Honestly, that's a deal breaker, dude. Like, I'm not. That's ridiculous." Yeah. Even like, I'm if not it's gonna stop. Just uh, just like anybody saying, don't do this when you get in a yeah. relationship, whether whatever it is. Yeah, why are they trying to control you, right? I, I get DMs about that where they're like, oh, my partner doesn't want me to ride. What should I do? I'm like, find another partner, dude. Like, what yeah. the hell? Is, like, no one should tell you what to do. Like, it's weird. Yeah, I could see parents, and we did the whole, uh, you did like a how to convince your parents or how to talk to your parents. Yeah. That's yeah. a different story because, I mean, it's like it's your parents. It's like, and they just want to make sure you're safe and, and doing well. But a partner, it's like, that's controlling. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I get those comments too. I'm like, that's, that's a toxic relationship. But if you want to stay in it, this yeah. is how you would do it. And Cause that's the thing like you, you, you know, you don't choose your parents, but you choose your partner. So, if, you know, yeah. if you choose the right partner. They shouldn't do that. Dan, this is a beautiful date spot though. I hope that we're going to get lucky later tonight. Cause this is really nice, man. Thank you so much for bringing me yeah. out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be, it's going to be great. I got, I got, you know, some food, some snacks, a little picnic set up. Oh, a little picnic set up. Yeah. We're gonna set up right here, you know, with sunset. That's wonderful. Is this a? This is just like a little. This isn't like a trail or anything, no, right? No, no, this isn't a trail. This leads to like a cliff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cliff, yeah. We actually rode right. Yeah, the road uh, yeah, right I there. see that road over there. Yeah, gosh, yeah. this is so pretty, man. This is unbelievable. Yeah, this is Tucson, man. And there, and this is not even the top. We have plenty to go, but yeah, um, that's crazy. I, so it's like I was, I was noticing on the topography of the place where it's like you have this big valley here, which is Tucson, but you're surrounded by mountains, literally. 360 right i don't see anywhere yeah. where there's not mountains yeah those mountains over there is mexico um this oh these, that's that's just straight to mexico over there yeah that's mexico that's i like, didn't realize we were that far south that yeah. makes sense though yeah i mean it's it's like an hour and a half roughly yeah uh, from from tucson itself but yeah you can see far the the viewing distance of of up here is amazing we've got the rincon mountains right here and there's a uh -huh. you can see you can even see roads and trails through the rincon mountains yeah um and then in between the rincon and then this mountain range this is the catalina mountain range you'll see the trail kind of right there but you'll definitely see it when we get further up yeah that is reddington's on the other side and then we got uh i forgot what those mountain ranges on the other side is but where gates pass was you were surrounded by mountains yeah surrounded um mount bigelow's the biggest one here mount lemon is where that is right there yeah so it's just it's just a lot of fun a lot of cool things i'm glad i moved from yuma to here because yuma is just flat yeah it's not just, fun no Unless that's how i that's how i felt about um when i lived in dallas and then moving down to austin i was like oh cool like there's some elevation changes some cool hills like it's prettier out here like it's really great because dallas is just like a pancake dude like there's nothing yeah. nothing out there couldn't imagine if you rode all the way here that would have sucked oh my god yeah no i got a couple <laughs> comments in this like oh did you ride out there like no no i did not that sounds miserable <laughs> i am definitely not a long distance tourer kind of guy well i have to get the right bike for it but i don't really love doing that i like trailering my bikes and riding and then trailering back i don't love riding there i need to do that too yeah i definitely need to do that gotta get the van bro i'm gonna get the van man i gotta get, get it van. gotta get yeah. it cool man i'm gonna shut this off yeah <laughs> i never say bye <laughs> you don't <laughs> no i try I always, not to i always tell people bye pat them on the head you know tell them to subscribe <laughs>